Hey, John. Hey, what's going on? How you doing? Good hey, morning. man. J.A. You sound, you sound Last week down. you were tired of this S. Yeah. And are then you, you lose again, high-scoring affair. You still tired of this S? I mean, it's definitely, it's definitely frustrating when you lose <laughs> two times to an opponent that we felt like we had them right where we wanted them. We had them in great positions. But <clears throat> that's the difference between good and bad teams right now. It's, it's good teams find ways to win games, and you know, bad teams find ways to lose games. And right now, we're just not a not a bad team, but we're not where we should be. We're not where we need to be, and you know, I'll take the blame. You can start it off with the defense. We need to be better. Same thing every week. John, I I know you know this, and I but I have to ask you because I wouldn't be doing my job if I did. Okay, so Jay Glazer yesterday on Fox pregame says, "quote." So Washington, they've got three defensive linemen. Jonathan Allen came out this past week and said he wants out of Washington pretty much. Um, and he says there's rumors out there that the Bears have a deal for Chase Young. He says that's not true. But he was predicting that one of you, Montez, or Chase would be dealt. You kind of just want to clarify any of that? Yeah, this is my home. And this is where I'm going to stay at. You know, whenever things go bad, people are going to find excuses or find stories and make whatever they can of. But if I wanted to trade, I would have came out and said it publicly. So mm-hmm. I'm focused on what I can do to help this team win now and about the future. We'll see what happens in the future. But as of right now and the rest of the season, my goal is to help this team win. I think just for the record, John, I think Glazer was just reacting to what you said in the locker room after the Giant game. I he think, was extrapolating from that. Yeah, I don't think Which, he's got I don't think he's got a source that set, that knows you want out. I think he was just reacting to your comments. Right, well, yeah, right. I mean, like I said, in the NFL, one thing I know is anything you say will, will, can, and will be used against you. So, I mean, it is what it is. Uh-huh. So, John, when there's a rumor out like that, do, do you then contact your agent and tell him to get in touch with Jay Glazer and, and just basically say, like, you got to shoot this down? Like, I like I didn't say this. You're just running with something that, that you took from a soundbite. Like, is there anything uh-huh. after this at this point for you or no? I would say no because if that's the case, I'll I would have to do that so many times throughout the year. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. You, you you can't fight what everybody says. You can't try to combat every single point. It is what it is. People are going to say what they're going to say, and the people who are close to me know what it is, and you move on. That's probably the hardest part about an athlete is hearing something that is so fake, but still having to answer questions about it, or still having people that you love ask you about it, and you you just can't always fight back. You can say what you got to say, but it's a, it's a never-ending battle. It's a never-ending cycle. And that's something that I've had to learn how to deal with is being okay with false narratives being out there about me. And that's every athlete, not just me. So it is what it is. It comes with the territory, and, you know, it is, yeah, it is what it is. Did you just kind of say that you love us? Because you said people that you love <laughs> have to answer questions. <laughs> love's exactly. a strong word. <laughs> I, I wanted to ask you about yesterday in particular. You know, the, the, the Eagles have one of the best offenses in the league, and – Jalen Hurts is one of the best players in the game, and he's a dual-threat guy. But yesterday he looked like he wasn't his normal self running the game. Obviously, the secondary had a problem dealing with A.J. Brown in his passing game. But what did you see from Jalen yesterday? We know, and not just with Jalen, with any team, that if you can control the line of scrimmage and make the life of the quarterback hard, not allow him to run around and not allow the running game to get established – you're, you can make any quarterback uncomfortable. And I feel like as a D-line, we were able to, you know, have success early on. We just weren't able to continue that throughout the entirety of the game. And, again, you made great plays while under the rest. you got to give them credit. Hey, are they the best offensive line you face? Yeah, I would say so. You know, what makes them really good is their ability to play five as one. You know what I mean? Any, any team can have a – collection of great talent on the offensive line, but their ability to play so well together is what makes them dangerous and what makes them great. So I would definitely say for sure they're the best offensive line we play. Why do you think do you overall, think? and I know if you obviously if you knew the answer, you'd do it, but uh, you knew the solution, but why do you think overall, like you guys giving up 29 points a game, it's just like my brain explodes when I think about it, right? Because of the talent you guys have and what you've done in years past. Like, can, do you have any explanation? Maybe you just can't fix it. You kind of know what it is, but you just haven't been able to fix it yet. That's a great question. I mean, I've been, you know, I've always come in here and say we're close or, you know, one play away. Mm-hmm. But this year we're just not a good defense. I mean, that's the only thing I can say right now until we prove it otherwise. And that starts with me. So i got to be better moving forward, and I'm going to give this organization and this team everything I have in my tank and 
we'll go from there. Do you, do you feel like you guys are being coached as well as possible or being put in the position? I'm not asking you to throw coaches under the bus, but maybe maybe you could scheme things differently or, like, where do you begin? You know, I'll, I'll say when, when you have a defense that's struggling, I feel like everybody's to blame. You know what I mean? I think coaches have a blame in it. I think players have a blame in it. I think everybody does. So as an organization, we just have to be better. And right now we haven't been. So, you know, again, that starts with me. i got to be better. And one thing I can tell people is I give you everything I got. You can always expect nothing less. I know that doesn't always feel great, but it is it's the truth. So, you know, just know we're going to continue to fight. We're going to continue to grow. and we're gonna, I'm going to continue to give you everything I got. John, as a defensive team leader, do you pull aside Manny Forbes after the game, like in the locker room, and say, hey, man, like A.J. Brown is doing this to a lot of different people. It's not just you to kind of lift him up as a rookie going through a tough time. Well, I kind of just tell him, like, as a rookie, that's a very, very difficult assignment, very difficult challenge. And then I kind of explained to him my situations when I was a rookie and just let him know, like, it's the NFL. It's going to happen. And what makes, what separates the good from the great players is the players that can overcome this and the players that can use this struggle that, you know, he's faced this year and overcome it and become better for it. So, Emmanuel Forbes has all the, all the makings to be a great player, and he has his right mindset, so he's going to be just fine. It's just one of the growing things you go through as a rookie. We were kind of confused on that play why he was put in that position based on how he performed the last few weeks, and then he obviously was benched. And um, was Saint was Saint Juiced on the field at the time? Why was why was Forbes on AJ on that particular play? I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I have no idea. I one thing I try to do is I try to really focus on the front seven because since I don't understand coverages like they do, it's easy for me to get mad at them and call them out without knowing the entirety of what's going on. So I, I really just try to focus on what I can control to help them out and move forward like that. Um, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, I think that's a question for Del Rio. Um, yeah. I'll say this. I mean, I, it, I don't understand why they did it. But I still, at the end of the day, thought for the most part, a lot of the coverages look pretty good. AJ Brown just made a hell of a catch, you know, a couple times. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and I thought our guys, other than like with Danny Johnson or who, somebody had that miscommunication, I thought Johnson. our guys were right there. Even when they caught over St. Juice or when they caught even over Forbes. Like Forbes is right there. I just, you know, thought it wasn't yeah. bad coverage. <laughs> and he had help over the top. Yeah. Yeah. The NFL is tough, man. It's, uh, <laughs> There's no, there's no, uh, nothing you can do for a perfectly thrown pass and a, you know, and a great catch. So I mean, you right. just got to get give credit to them. What, what about just the fact? And again, I know you don't know the answer to this, but I just got to ask you what it feels like from a player's perspective. Like, the guys play such so hard. Maybe defensively you don't get the results, but you know you put up thirty some points. You fight. You're right there. You got to lead in the fourth quarter against like. A great team like the Eagles. Stop and then, the tush push, the brotherly shove. Yeah, you guys create some big turnovers right there in the red zone. Huge. And then, you know, we have like a 14-7 dud. Now, you guys play pretty good in that game. But you give up 40 to the Bears. You know what I mean? That's like the inconsistent <clears throat> effort, the playing up and down the competition. Is there – I mean, you have to notice that, right? 1,000% as a team and as a defense. That's the big thing is we got to be consistent. And what's frustrating is when you play like – as a team, how we did against the Eagles and defensively how we did for the Giants for the most part and mm -hmm. at times against the Falcons. We just have to find a way to be consistent. And it's frustrating, trust me. It, it really is. So, I mean, there's no easy solution. There's no quick fix or we would have done it by now. So, I mean, right. again, people aren't going to like that. So we just, we just got to keep working, man. I mean, that's all we can do. I mean, it's either that or quit, and we're not going to quit. So, you know, we just got to keep going back to it. And Is it a psychological you know, letdown? Like, like a division rival, you, there's like a natural inclination to play play tough, and then you play like like the Patriots this week. I'll be honest with you, John. I'm expecting a letdown for whatever reason. Yeah, I mean, listen, I, I'm not one to say what we're going to do. I'd rather just go out there and show you guys. And, right. I mean, look, we got to go out there and prove it. We haven't earned the right to have the benefit of the doubt until we go out there and prove it. I think it's fair for you to have those expectations, but just know as a team, we're gonna get we're gonna get it figured out. When we'll we'll see, but mm -hmm. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna make any verbal promises. I'm just gonna go out there and show you with our actions. Right. Talking to Jonathan Allen, Pro Bowl defensive lineman, after the Commanders fall to the Eagles for the second time this season. 
three and five. I'm just wondering your perspective in terms of hopes for the playoffs. I know you don't necessarily want to think about that, but Jason has said many times on the show today, hey, they're still three and five. And if you look at the NFC and you kind of go through the teams, you're going to be amongst a group of teams, including the Vikings, who just saw Kurt, lost Kirk Cousins for the season, uh, the Saints, who are four and four, the Bucks, who are three and four, the Rams, who just got clobbered by the Cowboys. They're three and four. You're yep. going to be amongst a group of teams that are vying for that wild card. How much do you still look at that, and does that give you hope? No, you definitely look at it, but I know that until we defensively play more consistently and play better, it doesn't really matter about the playoffs because, I mean, we're – with the way we're playing, we're not going to be able to get to where we want to get to and accomplish what we want to accomplish. So for me, I'm taking it game by game. I'm focusing on what I can do to help this organization out and this team out, and we're going, we're going, we're going from there. But right now, the play, there's just too many things that we have to fix as a team before we can legitimately focus on the playoffs. So John, is it when you say there's too many things got to fix? Is it more? Is it just individual performances that you're talking about, or is it game plan stuff? I would say when things are is, when things are at where they're at right now, I think it's everything. I think we need to look at everything. That's not me blaming anybody. I think that no one has played good enough to avoid the critical eye, and that's what we just have to do. And that's what I'm going to do, again, starting with myself, make sure I'm doing everything I can to help the team win and go on from there. When, uh, when is it appropriate, John, for, like, a players-only meeting? Like, I don't know. I, every season's different. You're you're a team leader. Like, is that something you would do, or is that not your role? Or like, you know what I mean? Like, where you guys just talk amongst yourselves? Yeah, no. You know, uh, a player only meeting is one of those things that you don't. I don't want to say waste it, but it's one of those things where once you use it, cast out the bag. You know what I mean? So, I mean, talking with other guys on the team, we're gonna make sure we do it when we feel like the time is right and. We don't know, man. We don't know. Like I said, I, w- I wish I had the answers for you, but if I did, we wouldn't right. be in this situation. So, But is it something that you guys have pondered? Like maybe this is something we might have to do at some point? Yeah, 1,000%. And, you know, even though we haven't had a players-only meeting yet, the players are still communicating, and we're still trying to figure out what's going on ourselves. So, right. I mean, all the players are in great communication. Just because we haven't had a quote-unquote specifically designated players-only meeting, we're, we're still communicating, trying to get this thing figured out and, and move, move, moving forward. So, yeah. Are there we, we, we are there specific no, right. are there specific plays that you'll think about in this game that Jonathan Allen could have made? All right, because um, you don't want to generalize too much. So you keep saying you got to play better. Like, were there plays in the game where you didn't live up to your own standards? Yeah, I would say the second, third down when Jalen Hurts scrambled for a first down, I got to get off the block to make that play and get the sack. Um, that's just one example of a play that comes to my head that I could have made to help our team out, and that would have wiped three points off the board. So, was that a technique yeah. thing? Like, did he just get you, and you just didn't use a particular technique? Like, what happened? No, I mean, I, I, I was rushing the blocker, and Jalen Hurts stepped up in the B gap in between me and Chase, and. Even if it is a hard play to make, that's a play that me and Chase should make. And I'm going to say, focus on myself. That's a play that I feel like I can make and I should make. Mm-hmm. John, how when, after a game like that, does do you guys meet with Del Rio um, as a defense, or does that does that come in like team meetings during the week? What happens after the game there? After the game, you know, we go in there, we talk to Coach Rivera, he gives us his message, and we go home, and then. I mean, you start the week over. Right. I mean, you focus on you focus on the bad things you did, how you can improve, and you get really you get start to get ready for um, New England. Mm-hmm. Hey, I wanted to shift gears. So you guys beat the Falcons uh, just two weeks ago, and in that game, it was Desmond Ritter a quarterback. But how surprised are you? And I, I'm assuming you're saying not surprised that Taylor Heineke came in there for the Falcons yesterday, Ritter may or may not have been concussed, but he wasn't doing much. And immediately in four out of the first five drives, the Falcons put up points. I mean, I can't be surprised. I've seen Taylor Heineke for four years, three years, however long he's been here, do the exact same thing. I mean, he when, when people describe a guy that has the it factor, I think Taylor Heineke is a perfect example. He's not the biggest, not the strongest, doesn't have the biggest arm, but he just makes plays. What, 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 what's your opinion on Sam? Did we ask him about Sam? Not I think yet. we have. What, what's been your take? I mean, Sam's super impressive, obviously, yesterday. But 
I'm actually not surprised. I've kind of seen this poise and this ability throughout. It just needs to be more consistent, needs to keep stacking good games. You need to play um, Philly every week. <laughs> but, but, like, I mean, aren't you – Aren't you just so impressed with what that kid has done at 23? I mean, the guy was 22 years old like a month ago. Yeah, you know, I think the thing that's that's frustrating is we've. I think we've all said that, like, man, if once we get our quarterback, we're going to be a really dangerous team. And I genuinely believe that we have our quarterback of the future. Mm-hmm. I truly believe that. I think he's shown enough to worthy to have the justification of moving forward and saying like he's our guy. And we have the pieces around him, but we're just not coming together. And that's what's frustrating because we, I truly believe Sam's our franchise quarterback. I believe he's our franchise quarterback. I believe he'll be our quarterback for the next five to ten years. I truly believe that. So, I mean, it's good to see him do it, but I'm not surprised. I'm, I'm really not surprised. I wouldn't expect anything less. All right, Jonathan, you guys got the Patriots next. Then you've got Seattle after that, both road games. Uh, best of luck, and we'll talk to you on Monday. Hey, John, when you're up in the uh, the hotel on Saturday night up in Boston, in Boston, you got to make sure you're watching your boys take on LSU. Oh, did he hang up? I must have hung up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was ready. To... I like the setup, though. I was going to ask him about was. his boys. Right. It's huge, a lock, massive dude. game. It's a lock. He's going to watch it. That oh, was yeah. Commander's defensive end, John Allen. <laughs> Presented by Main Street Bank. Cheer local, bank local. Put their team in your office. Visit mstreetbank.com for more information. That was the best part.